Uh, marketing research. Uh, it's a topic that often um, confuses and scares um, marketing managers or managers in general, um, but there's no reason why it should. Um, so there are any number of reasons why organizations um, choose not to do research or not to use market research. And this is often a little bit more prevalent among nonprofits for a, a, a few different reasons. And so this short little uh, lecture uh, topic anyways, talks about myths um, that are associated with doing market research among nonprofits. Um, so this may serve as uh, kind of a reflection of why we should really push marketing research and why we should not avoid it uh, within the nonprofit arena um, and also kind of give some heads up on in terms of signals or signs that um, that research may be needed but maybe uh, avoid might be uh, being avoided within a, a nonprofit as well so again this is dr. flight good to see you um, please uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions all right so um, why should market research be done why is it not done why what are some myths associated with it um, the, the reality, though, is that market research is uh, relied upon and performed less in uh, nonprofits than in for-profit arenas. And we could ask the initial question as to why. Why is this happening? And then we'll talk about some misconceptions uh, associated with, with research just in general. So um, there are legitimate reasons why nonprofits do less, less or rely on market research less. It's a limited budget issue some of the time. Um, marketing research costs money and it costs behavior, it costs resources, um, and those resources need to come from somewhere. And so um, with limited budgets, it's, um, <laughs> there should be a T in there, budgets. Anyways, um, the, uh, that, that causes a potential problem. Um, some nonprofits uh, would um, view um, information gathering techniques as difficult to um, difficult to acquire or, or sophistication may be uh, a challenge or something like that. The reality uh, here is that um, uh, nowadays being able to do surveys and things like that is, is fairly fairly straightforward and, and, and easy. Um, but again, um, some of these techniques may be out of the reach for nonprofits or they may feel that way anyways. Um, and then also, uh, again, marketing research tends to be a specialized field that takes a little bit of extra uh, expertise. And so if that expertise is not there, um, or at least if it's not recognized um, among the decision makers that are, that are there, if, if they lack the expertise to understand research and research processes, then, um, then, then it, it's going to be difficult to get them on board to do that. So, so there are legitimate reasons why um, uh, nonprofits maybe don't engage in marketing research as, as much as they should. But there are also mis, misconceptions of this, um, and these reasons aren't necessarily always 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 um, sufficient to to say we're not going to do research so myth number one big decision oftentimes research is considered important or useful only if there is a big decision to be made so you know you could be making lots of managerial decisions on a day-to-day -day basis um, and those managerial decisions um, you know you could say well we don't need research for that we only need research for the big decisions um, and that's kind of a myth because oftentimes we're making lots of little decisions that need um, a little bit of backup data anyways think about if you're managing a, a, a small operation or a gym or a, um, uh, some type of a service. We think about our, our hours of operation, like when should we be open? 
when should we close? Should we stay open till six or should we close at seven? Should we open an hour early in the morning? That may seem like a minor, small decision, but a little bit of data would really help answer that question. Um, other decisions, staffing, like when to staff, when not to staff, how to greet people at the door, um, things of that nature, doing a promotion to entice people to come in, doing an event um, or planning day-to-day -day operations, scheduling, things of that nature, um, when, when, when things are going to happen, um, you know, your calendar of events. Like those may not seem like uh, particularly big decisions. And so the manager may say, well, we really don't need market research to, to help us decide those. But a little bit of data would, a little bit of research anyways, a little bit of data available to us would um, actually be really, really helpful and probably give us the right answer that we need for any of these types of questions, even though they may not be perceived as particularly big decisions. Another myth uh, would be an idea of what we call survey myopia. Oftentimes managers think of research maybe in a new, too narrow of a perspective uh, to be useful uh, in, or maybe limited in a certain way. Um, thinking of something from a narrow perspective is actually something we call myopia. It's a common concept, but it's basically having this idea of tunnel vision. Um, so it's actually a medical term that relates to eyesight and being able to not really see the big picture um, and being too narrow sighted. And so sometimes we think of research as being um, as, as being kind of we, we only think of it as um, in a very narrow type of perspective, but we don't see the long term benefits of research. Um, because of the short-term costs and time it takes to actually perform. So I'm going to engage perhaps in some marketing research today, um, but it's going to cost me money and it's going to cost me some resources, and I'm not sure that that cost today is worth the long-term benefits I'm going to receive. That would be an illustration of having a myopic view of the overall benefits that research could provide for you. Um, number three deals with techniques of collecting data. Um, sometimes we hear uh, a manager say, oh yeah, we had, um, we, we had, you know, I got information from our customers and um, it was like a focus group or it was uh, an interview, but what it was in reality was an informal chat or a um, kind of a, a in passing we talked and uh, I got I talked to three or four customers today and what happens is you talk to three or four customers and then you blow out of proportion what they actually said and you think that that those two or three or four customers are representative of the entire customer base that you serve. Um, so these informal qualitative types of bits of information are not market research, although they do help uh, maybe uncover problems and things like that. They're not formal research like focus groups should be in the way focus groups and, and formal research is conducted. Um, the only tool for marketing research, so focus groups may be misunderstood as the, that, that this is the way market research is done. Um, the thing is, we know that there are a lot of other ways we can collect data. Um, focus groups may also be thought of as um, as as too informal, or too local or focal, um, in non-representative or representative few. Um, remember though that research uses a representative sample from an audience. Um, so conversations with guests, like two or three at a time, is really not the same thing as a 10 to 15 person focus group. And focus groups, to be effective, you have multiple focus groups. So it might be that you have three or four focus groups, each of 10 people. So now you're starting to get up to 30 or 40 participants, as opposed to having one or two conversations in the lobby. Um, and the two just aren't 
equatable. They're not the same. Um, yet a manager may naively think that those conversations are sufficient enough for uh, qualitative research or qualitative data, and, and they're really just simply not. Um, so I might think I'm doing research, but I'm really not in that particular context, and that's a problem. Another myth, uh, this idea that it's expensive to do research. Um, it's not expensive to do research. It can be, of course, and it does take some time and effort, but, it, but, but with technology today, the resources that we have, um, it's not a requirement that we um, spend lots and lots of money necessarily to do really high-powered uh, research and collect good quality data. There's lots of software available for us uh, to be able to tap into. So even at a university, um, there's things like Qualtrics or SurveyMonkey or services like that that allow us to collect um, data using sur surveys. Um, so those are super available to us. We have lots of computing power to do statistical analysis nowadays. We even have software that we can um, act, you know, purchase or, or, or tap into to do qualitative data analysis, um, which can be very sophisticated and very helpful moving forward. But it doesn't have to necessarily cost a ton of money to be able to do these types of things. Myth number five of our seven different myths. Managers th think from time to time that we can wait or we don't need this information right away, that there's not an imperative uh, to gather information before we make a decision. This is similar in terms of concept to the myopic outlook, whereas um, Whereas we may feel pressured to make decisions uh, that impact short-term outcomes. So we have a short-term outcome that happens um, and we feel like that's the first thing that needs to be dealt with as opposed to um, uh, long-term type realities that are, that are going. And uh, one of the concepts that's important to stress that non nonprofits have an issue with is that information should be an ongoing uh, information gathering should be an ongoing activity that happens and that ongoing activity should inform decision makers on a daily basis um, it doesn't it's not a start and stop type of a thing to be effective what we really need is data that's gathered over periods of time um, and that would be a good a good thing to have uh, myth number six, you have to be a sophisticated researcher to do it. Nope, not necessarily. That's not necessarily the case. Yes, um, research tends to be very detailed and uh, you want to execute research well, but you don't have to necessarily be a data scientist to, to do it. Um, so you don't have to have sophisticated research researchers or research techniques necessarily to be able to at least do some market research. Um, an underlying idea is that some data research, data and research gathering is better than none. Uh, and this is generally true. Um, you know, we want to make decisions um, that have at least some inform, informed uh, content from from the marketplace. So at a minimum, some basic research helps helps us in our decision making process. Uh, I'm not saying that we want to completely make decisions based off of data and research, um, but if you don't use any external information to help you make your decisions, then your decisions will not be as good as they otherwise could be. So you don't have to be a sophisticated researcher necessarily to do at least some market research. Another myth is that when research is done, the research isn't used. So basically the concept is uh, I'm a manager and uh, I'm going to have some data collected, but we've done this in the past and it's never really been used. So why should I do it? Uh, why should I continue to do it? Um, and 
that's that's a problem when we think about you know like the cost and the time associated with doing the research project you know why do it if it's not going to be ultimately put into place so before the research actually begins one of the strategies is for the researcher and the manager to sit down and clearly understand why we're doing this research and specifically outline how this research is going to be used in the future um, so that's a really important sit down meeting that you have with whomever is going to actually do the research, explain why this research is important, what decision is going to be made as a result of this research, and just clearly have a purpose for this research to be done. We want to understand how these findings will impact the organization. This has to be super clear and we have to at the end have some very clear presentation or report that that is made um, that ties in the results with the impact on the firm and the decision that's going to be made as a result of the results that um, that that come about. So, um, so, so yeah, that I mean, it is, of course, possible that a research project is conducted and that the results of the project you know kind of don't yield anything useful but the reason why that happens is because the sit down doesn't happen at the beginning of the research process between whoever's collecting the data and whoever's making the decision so so there has to be a clear understanding of the purpose of the research and how this research is actually going to be used within the organization Okay, so uh, wrapping this up then, um, there are reasons why research is not done uh, or used as much or as effectively in the organization. People perceive um, research as being something that is only used for big decisions. People feel like there's too much of an upfront cost associated with uh, research and they don't see the long-term benefits of having research done. People uh, misunderstand what research is in terms of the data collection process and they overemphasize short conversations with clients who do not represent the entire market base. So better better forms of research and a better perception of research, particularly in the focus group area, uh, are, are misconceived. There's a misconception or a myth that research has to be expensive, and that's just not true. There's a, a misconception that we have to do things um, right now uh, or else we lose the benefit of research. Um, this is somewhat a myopic kind of kind of viewpoint um, that's that that that's that kind of plays in into a role there. Um, the reality is that much market research is ongoing and should be ongoing and and there shouldn't be an imperative that we can't wait to do it. We have to do it now. There's a myth out there that only sophisticated researchers, uh, sophisticated data, anal data analysts are, are required and that, that we can't do it without them. That's not the truth. And then finally, the myth that research is not read suggests that research projects are started but then not ultimately used to make decisions. So uh, that can be avoided for sure by sitting down and having a clear purpose for whatever research or data is being collected and tying the results of that data into a specific decision that's going to be made as a result of it. Okay, so um, myths and misconceptions, um, particularly acute to the nonprofit organization. Um, these may also exist in for-profit organizations, especially entrepreneurs and smaller organizations that don't have or don't feel they have the resources to, to do market research, but they're particularly present in nonprofits. And um, it's part of a nonprofit mindset um, where uh, nonprofit managers don't feel like they're like 
sophisticated enough or um, or that they should operate like a for-profit organization. But market research is really uh, ubiquitous. It's, it happens all over the place, whether you're a nonprofit, an entrepreneur, a small business, a large business, a government. Uh, really, regardless of your organizational form, some type of data collection process is required. So um, that finishes up this little segment. And uh, okay, so if you have questions, please uh, reach out. Thanks.